What's up YouTube? My name is Clickwood and I am back again with another Madden 15 Ultimate Team video. And today guys, we got to see some epic Madden 15 gameplay footage. Yes, we saw everything from pack openings to uh, just scrolling through the menus to looking at different sets, which are now the, the thing that they're calling collections. Uh, we saw an actual game that a developer was playing as well. So we got a ton of different content today in the EA Sports stream of Madden 15 and specifically Madden 15 Ultimate Team. So there were some great things that we saw in there. Obviously, a couple things that were a little bit disappointing. But overall, I think that things were really, really good. And I want to get into some of the things that I saw, some of the takeaways that I think are most important for us to take a look at uh, when we're analyzing what this game is looking like going into Madden 15. So first of all, I want to say that the biggest thing to me, and I said this in multiple videos, uh, the convenience factor of Madden 15 needed to be better than it was in Madden 25. And one of the things that they came right out of the gate at the beginning and told us is that there is no more pending collections segment in Madden 15. So instead of doing pending collections and having to go in through multiple different menus every single time to do anything, you can actually send a card right to your sets immediately out of your reserves, out of your current roster. I forget what they're calling those things. They might still be called the same thing. But um, anyway, they you can actually send them right to those collections or the sets as they're actually being called now. And that is a major convenience upgrade for all of us. And the other thing that I really liked as well is that there are not going to be any more collectibles that are completely useless to you. So, like for example, most of us in the beginning when we were first doing Madden uh, 25, we actually went out and did the coach collections and like the jersey collection, the home stadiums collections, those type of things because they were so, so easy to do in comparison to the other collections that you could do. They had some cool rewards and it was just nice to have that like little bonus of actually being able to have completed a collection. Well, in Madden 15, all of those collections, again, now known as sets, those are actually going to be repeatable. Now, I shouldn't say all of them. A lot of them appeared to be that they're going to be uh, repeatable. And they actually had a little indicator when you scrolled over the set and it said repeatable. So that means that uh, we can actually do it more than one time. We can do it as many times as we want, which is really great because that's going to mean that when we get those jerseys or we get those home stadiums or coach cards or things like that, we are actually going to be able to uh, see some you know, use out of those. We're actually going to be able to have them for a set. So that's really nice. Um, the other things that I really liked about it, the menu screen seemed very, very intuitive. It wasn't confusing. The first time that I turned on Madden 25, I was a little bit confused. I didn't really know. First of all, I didn't even know how to get to Ultimate Team. You, apparently, you had to go to like another menu or you had to click R1 on PlayStation 4 just to get to Ultimate Team. And that was kind of a pain. But now, I, I mean, the, the menu screen in this new game looks so much easier. Everything loaded really, really quickly. There wasn't the little delay in between. Now, I'm assuming, I think that they were on Xbox One, if I remember correctly. But... Uh, either way, it, they were on a next-gen system, either PS4 or, or Xbox One. I'm pretty sure it was Xbox One. So if you're on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, I don't know that th that's going to be the case for this game. I've heard, I've heard rumors that they revamped it for all the systems, so it should be a little bit improved. But, it, you know, because we haven't seen the gameplay, I really can't speak to that. But if you are on a next-gen system like most people are upgrading to at this point, you do have the faster menus, which is really great. Uh, something that I've been looking forward to, and I'm very, very happy about that. Now, let's get into a little bit more about the gameplay and, and like, I guess not the gameplay, but the features in Madden Ultimate Team. Now, the first thing is that uh, they did open up the, uh, the coaches, and that was something that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, they, were, they were talking about why coaches are actually going to be important in Madden 15. Unlike they really weren't that important in, in Madden 25. Obviously, if you got like the Jim Schwartz or the John Madden or things like that, they gave you a little boost. Um, but there are actually the only things apparently that are going to have overall team boosts in the beginning of the game are going to be coaches. So they are going to have uh, not only the the substantial um uh, like the the chemistry, I forget what they're calling it now. I, I'm using all these bad terminology from Madden 25, but 
uh, whatever, the, the essentially the chemistry of your team, that is, is going to be very much dictated by your coach because your coach is going to give you big boosts in that category. But it's also going to be able to potentially give you boosts in things like, you know, power moves or speed potentially. I don't know about that one. Uh, acceleration, strength, you know, stuff like that that is really, really important to the game. So it, coaches are going to be a major thing in this game, it appears. Next thing... Um, we saw, or they, they told us that the only thing that is going to be available on day one in terms of packs is going to be pro packs. And unfortunately, that kind of sucks. Uh, well, actually, they did say that there's going to be like a starter pack, essentially, and they showed us that. It was a bunch of junk, just like it was before. But um, the, the fact that there's only pro packs on day one means to us that there's not going to be the higher end packs throughout the year like some of us were hoping for and that was something that I had suggested in one of my videos that they actually have at least one higher end pack available at all times and apparently that's not going to happen which is kind of unfortunate I wish that there was like a, an all pro pack available at all times that could just give us a little bit better stuff but apparently that's not going to happen we are just going to have the pro packs so it's kind of unfortunate, like I said, but at the same time, I kind of do understand it, especially in the beginning of the game, because one of the things that I noticed is that there were a ton of low overall cards. They were, these guys, the, the developers themselves were like going crazy when they were pulling like 81, 80 overall cards. I mean, not really crazy. They weren't doing a, a London Walter Payton reaction or anything, but they were, they were getting excited about catch, catching a, uh, an 80 overall T.Y. Hilton or an 81 overall Reggie Wayne. Um, there was, I think uh, the highest card that I actually saw was an 85 overall Colin Kaepernick. I think that one of the developers actually said that the, that is the highest overall for a gold card in the game, at least at this point. And I don't think that they're going to be adding any more gold cards or anything. I also did see an 85 overall uh, Jason Hatcher card. So that was, you know, one thing that uh, is a little bit higher uh, for than I would expect it to be anyway is you know at 85 overall I know he had a really great year for my Cowboys last year and he's wearing some stupid hat in this one in his picture <laughs> but uh he's on the Redskins now of course and uh I just I'm kind of surprised that they would make him 85 overall especially considering that like T.Y. Hilton and Reggie Wayne were only 80 overall but whatever it's it's no uh, it's really not a big deal uh but we do need to be obviously aware that there are lower overall cards in this game and what that kind of means to me is I like it. I really do. I know a lot of people were kind of like, you know, why would I open up packs if I'm only going to get 85 overall gold cards? Well, here's the thing. If the best card in the game is only 85 overall, then it's not a big deal if, the, if you pull an 85 overall card. Now, obviously, there are going to be better cards going forward. But for right now, if the best card in the game is 85 overall, and which we don't actually know that because we only saw them open up gold cards, they didn't actually open up any elite cards that I saw. I don't even know if they're available on day one. They, they didn't specifically say, I don't think, but I think that it's very possible that the highest overall card right away is going to be 85 overall. So uh, that could be pretty brutal. Well, at least, actually, you know what? No, they did have... Um, obviously they showed some of the elite cards, so it must just be, they showed them previously to this video, uh, they tweeted them out, so it must just be that, that, that they're just extremely rare, because I think that they opened up 40 packs, and I don't think I saw one elite card, so, uh, you know, if they're extremely rare, and most people aren't going to be able to open them up, still, the skill gap is such a big difference between an 85 overall and your average starter, which it looks like it's going to be in the low 80s to, you know, 70s even. Overall, it's probably going to be your average starter to begin the game. I'm not that opposed to it. If As long as we're getting decent cards every, every game or every pack opening, that would be okay with me. And what they said in the stream is that it's going to be easier to build a good team, but it's not going to be as easy to build an amazing team. So I kind of like that. I think it's going to add to the competition. We're not going to be seeing everybody running, you know, with a gold uh, or a, and, uh, a golden ticket card at every position and an ultimate legend at every position, at least not right away. So I do appreciate that. I think that that's going to help with kind of the uh, creating a bigger skill gap between the people who are actually good and the people who are just relying on their cards like 
everybody claims that I do, which is probably true. But, um, you know, it's going to create that bigger skill gap between the people. And I do appreciate that. I think that that's going to be a good thing overall for the game. And I'm happy about it. So the next thing that I saw was that they had no duplicate cards in your in your lineup. So from what I understand, you can take a card and you can put him out of position. So if you have a uh, an Alden Smith outside linebacker card, you can put him at defensive end. But you can't also have that same exact Alden Smith card playing outside linebacker then. So you kind of have to choose. Do I want to have him here or do I want to have him here? Even if you have two of the cards, it really doesn't matter. You still need to only you still can actually only use one of them at a time. So that's kind of an improvement. Some people are saying at least that it's an improvement. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really opposed to duplicates, but they did also say, of course, that if you have multiple versions of a card, so like, for example, if, if there's an Alden Smith uh, fantasy card that comes out, you can play him at defensive end and then keep the standard Alden Smith card at, D, at uh, outside linebacker, and then you can have two Alden Smiths on the field, but they're different cards at least. So that's how they're going to allow us to do duplicates. The other thing that they mentioned specifically about taking a player and pulling them out of position is that it is actually going to lower their overall, or at least it's not going to increase their overall rating. Now, I don't know how they did that with the mechanics. I don't know if they made their awareness really, really low or if they actually went in and removed stuff like speed and acceleration and strength and, you know, the actual attributes that really affect the card. But... Uh, one way or another, what they did say is that it's not going to be an improvement. So, again, with like a player like Alden Smith, before when we would take him out of his outside linebacker position where he might be like a 94 overall, let's say, if we put him at defensive end, he shoots up to 99 overall. Well, in this game, that's not going to be the case. So we are going to actually have to have cards that are good at the position that we want them to play. Kind of a different thing. I kind of like it. I'm not opposed to it. I currently run players out of position, but that's more out of just the fact that it's cheaper to do it at this point, and uh, you can still get really, really good cards. So, you know, like I said, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. Now, the other things that um, I want to get into are a couple of the negatives, and these things mostly had to do with transactions. So, every other thing that I saw, I really liked about the game, but the two things that I was kind of I didn't really like. Number one, tax is back. Yes, I know. Yes, tax on the auction block is back. Now, they didn't confirm what that number would be. They didn't say it's going to be 10% like it was last year, but they didn't say it's going to be more or less either. They didn't mention specifically what it was. However, there were a couple game changers in the chat while the stream was going on, and at least two of them said that it was 10%. So take that for what it's worth. It's not absolute confirmation. Of course, they could always change it between now and, and when, or between when those guys actually played the game and when it's released. But at the same time, we at least know that there is tax. So that is unfortunate because there are people like myself, for example, who are trying to do a tournament like this, uh, like we're doing on my channel right now. And because of that, we're losing out on a bunch of coins just by doing a transaction. And I really don't like that. I really wish that we could just have it be that you could just sell the card for what it's worth and you don't have to take a tax on it. I mean, it's not like EA is, is uh, you know, having their servers bogged down by transactions or things like that where they need to pay for it or something. It's They're just destroying currency. That's basically all that's happening. And while I appreciate that, that they're kind of, kind of trying to control the inflation uh, prices, it really sucks, especially when you're first getting into the game because you don't have a lot of coins. You know, when you've only done five solo challenges and you want to sell a card and you have to lose 10% of that card's value, it's brutal. It basically makes it so that you can't sell cards, especially, like I said, in the beginning of the game, which is when we really need to make a lot of transactions. So I don't necessarily like that. Then the second thing, and this one was really frustrating to me because I don't agree with the reason that they said that it's not in the game, but multiple card trades are not going to be in Madden 15 Ultimate Team. It sucks. It sucks. I want multi-card trades. Now, what they said is that it will, it would actually increase scamming. And I really want them to explain how that would increase scamming because to me, when I make a transaction, let's say that I'm trading a, uh, a 99 overall uh, legend 
uh, let's see here, like a, a mm, I, I need a good quality card. So like, let's say a 99 overall Jerry Rice, okay? If I'm trading that to somebody and I want to get, let's say, three cards that are good, but not like that level. So, uh, you know, I'm, I want to get a, a fantasy card and an elite card and a gold card. The three of those for my Jerry Rice. Okay, how do I make that transaction fairly? Because at some point, I'm going to have to be trading something that is of no value, basically. Like, I'm going to have to throw in Jerry Rice and, like, two crappy bronze cards or a contract or something like that that pretty much doesn't have much value at all for your elite card. Because that's the way that the transaction has to be because it's one for one. So it makes it so that scamming is very, very possible on either end of the trade. Whereas if you just allowed multi-card trades, I could offer my, or you could offer your three cards for my one Jerry Rice card, and that's the end of it. There's no scamming involved because that's the end of the transaction. I really, really do not understand how they say that it's going to increase scamming. Maybe somebody can explain that to me in the comment section below of this video because I don't understand it. But I want to I want to hear what you guys have to say about the EA Sports Twitch stream that they did today. Did any of you guys watch it? Are you excited? Were there things that you liked, things that you didn't like, anything that surprised you? I really liked it overall. I'm really excited for the game to come out. I wish that I was able to get early access to it, but of course I'm on PlayStation 4, so that's not going to happen. But uh, either way, though, I am going to be getting the game on launch day. I'm planning on having content. The only thing that would stop me from having content on launch day is if my wife has our baby. So unless that happens, uh, we will have content out on launch day, the real launch day, at least the PlayStation 4 launch day. So with that being said, guys, let me know, like I said, in the comment section below what you thought of the stream or if you had any questions or any comments on the things that I obviously said in reaction to it. And press that like button below if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel because I am going to have a ton of Madden 15 content coming up for you guys, and I'm really excited about it. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I do appreciate it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.